Chapter 13 The Offering of Dharma Thereupon, Sakra, who was in the assembly, said to the Buddha, World-honored one, although I have listened to hundreds and thousands of sutras expounded by you in Manjushri, I did not hear of this inconceivable sutra of supramundane sovereign power and absolute reality. As I understand from your present preaching, if living beings listening to the Dharma of this sutra believe, understand, receive, uphold, read and recite it, they will surely realize this Dharma. How much more so if someone practices it as expounded? He will shut all doors to evil destinies and will open up all doors to blessedness, will win the Buddha's perfection, will overcome heresy, destroy the demons, cultivate Bodhi, set up a place of enlightenment or Bodhi Mandala, and follow in the Tathagata's footsteps. World honored one, if there are people who receive, uphold, read, recite and practice this sutra, I and my followers will provide them with all the necessities of life. If this sutra is kept in a town or hamlet, in a grove or a desert, I and my followers will come to the place of the preacher to listen to its dharma. I shall also cause the unbelievers to develop faith in this sermon. As to the believers of it, I shall protect them. The Buddha said, Excellent, Sakra, excellent. It is gratifying to hear what you have just said. This sutra gives a detailed exposition of the inconceivable supreme enlightenment realized by past, future, and present Buddhas. Therefore, Sakra, if a virtuous man or woman receives, keeps, reads, recites, and reveres this sutra, such an attitude is equal to making offerings to past future and present Buddhas. Sakra, if the great Chilakasam were full of countless Tathagatas, as many as the sugar canes, bamboos, reeds, rice grains, and hemp seeds in its fields, and if a virtuous man or woman, who has passed either a whole eon or a decreasing kalpa to revere, honor, praise, serve, and make offerings to these Buddhas, and then, after their nirvana or death, should build with relics from their bodies a seven-gemmed stupa as large as the four diva heavens put together and of a height reaching the Brahma heaven with a majestic spire to which he or she will make offerings of flowers, incense, strings of precious stones, banners and melodious music during either a whole kalpa or in a decreasing one. Sakra, what do you think of his or her merits? Are they many? Sakra replied, Very many, world-honored one, and it is impossible to count his or her merits for hundreds and thousands of eons. The Buddha said, Sakra, you should know that if another virtuous man or woman, after hearing this sutra of inconceivable liberation, believes, understands, receives, keeps, reads, recites, and practices this sutra, his or her merits will surpass those of the former man or woman. Why? Because the Bodhi, or enlightenment, of all Buddhas originates from this Dharma. And since enlightenment is beyond all measuring, the merits of this sutra cannot be estimated. The Buddha continued, Long before an uncountable number of eons in the past, there was a Buddha called Bhaisayaraja, whose titles are Tathagata, Arhat, Samyaksambuddha, Vidyakarana Sampana, Sugata, Lokavid, Anuttara, Parusadamya Sarathi, Sasta Diva Manusanyam, and Buddha Lokanatha or Bhagavan. His world was called Mahavyuha, and the then Eon. Alamkara Kakalpa. The Buddha, by Sayaraja, lived for twenty small kalpas. The number of Shravakas reached thirty-six Nayutas, and that of Bodhisattvas, twelve lakhs. There, Sakra, was a heavenly ruler, or 
Kakravarti called Precious Canopy, who possessed all the seven treasures and was the guardian of four heavens. He had a thousand sons who were respectable and brave and had overcome all opposition. At the time, Precious Canopy and his retinue had worshipped and made offerings to the Tathagata by Sayaraja for five eons, after which he said to his thousand sons, You should respectfully make offerings to the Buddha, as I have done. Obeying their father's order, they made offerings to the Tathagata by Saya for five eons, after which one of the sons called Lunar Canopy, while alone, thought, is there some other form of offering surpassing what we have made up to now? Under the influence of the Buddha's transcendental powers, a diva in the sky said, Virtuous man, the offering of Dharma surpasses all other forms of offering. Lunar Canopy asked, What is this offering of Dharma? The diva replied, Go and ask the Tathagata by Saya, who will explain it fully. Thereupon, Lunar Canopy came to the Tathagata Baisaya, bowed his head at his feet, and stood at his side, asking, World-honored one, I have heard that the offering of Dharma surpasses all other forms of offering. What is the offering of Dharma? The Tathagata replied, Virtuous one, the offering of Dharma is preached by all Buddhas in profound sutras, but it is hard for worldly men to believe and accept it, as its meaning is subtle and not easily detected, for it is spotless in its purity and cleanness. It is beyond the reach of thinking and discriminating. It contains the treasury of the Bodhisattva's Dharma store and is sealed by the Dharani symbol. It never backslides, for it achieves the six perfections, or paramitas discerns the difference between various meanings, is in line with the Bodhidharma, is at the top of all sutras. It helps people to enter upon great kindness and great compassion, to keep from demons and perverse views, and to conform with the law of causality and the teaching on the unreality of an ego, a man, a living being, and a life, and on voidness, formlessness, non-creating, and non-uprising. It enables living beings to sit in a Bodhi mandala to turn the wheel of the law. It is praised and honored by heavenly dragons, Gandharvas, etc. It can help living beings to reach the Buddha's Dharma store and gather all knowledge, or sarvajna, realized by saints and sages. Preach the path followed by all bodhisattvas. Rely on the reality underlying all things. Proclaim the doctrine of impermanence, suffering, voidness, and absence of ego and nirvana. It can save all living beings who have broken the precepts and keep in awe all demons, heretics, and greedy people. It is praised by the Buddhas, saints and sages, for it wipes out suffering from birth and death, proclaims the joy in nirvana as preached by the past, future, and present Buddhas in the ten directions. If a listener, after hearing about this sutra, believes, understands, receives, upholds, reads and recites it, and uses appropriate methods or upaya to preach it clearly to others, This upholding of the Dharma is called the offering of Dharma. Further, the practice of all Dharmas as preached, to keep in line with the doctrine of the twelve links in the chain of existence, to wipe out all heterodox views, to achieve the patient endurance of the uncreate or anutpati dharma kasanti as beyond creation, to settle once for all the unreality of the ego and the non-existence of living beings, and to forsake all dualities of ego and its objects without deviation from and contradiction to the law of causality and retribution for good and evil, by trusting to the meaning rather than to the letter, to wisdom rather than consciousness, 
to sutras revealing the whole truth rather than to those of partial revelation, and to the Dharma instead of the man, that is, the preacher, to conform with the twelve links in the chain of existence, or nidanas that have neither whence to come nor whither to go, beginning from ignorance, which is fundamentally non-existent, and conception, which is also basically unreal, down to birth, which is fundamentally non-existent, and old age and death, which are equally unreal. Thus contemplated, the twelve links in the chain of existence are inexhaustible, thereby putting an end to the wrong view of annihilation. This is the unsurpassed offering of Dharma. The Buddha then said to Sakra, Lunar Canopy, after hearing the Dharma from the Buddha, Bhaisaya, or the Buddha of Medicine, realized only the patience of meekness and took off his precious robe to offer it to that Buddha, saying, World-honored one, after your nirvana, I shall make offerings of dharma to uphold the right doctrine. Will your awe-inspiring majesty help me to overcome the demons and to practice the bodhisattva line of conduct? The Buddha, by Saya, knew of his deep thought and prophesied, Until the last moment, you will guard the dharma-protecting citadel. Sakra, at that time, Lunar Canopy, perceived the pure and clean dharma, and after receiving the Buddha's prophecy, believed it and left his home to join the order. He practiced the dharma so diligently that he soon realized the five transcendental powers. In his bodhisattva development, he won the endless power of speech, through his perfect control, or dharani, of all external influences. After the nirvana of the Buddha by Saya, he used this power of speech to turn the wheel of the law, spreading the dharma widely for ten small eons. Lunar Canopy was indefatigable in his preaching of the dharma and converted a million lakhs of people who stood firm in their quest of supreme enlightenment. Fourteen Neud is a people who set their minds on achieving the Sravaka and Pratyeka Buddha stages, and countless living beings who were reborn in the heavens. Sakra, who was that royal precious canopy? He is now a Buddha called the Tathagata Precious Flame, and his one thousand sons are the thousand Buddhas of the present Bhadrakalpa, the virtuous eon, whose first Buddha was Krakuchanda, and last Buddha was Ruchika. Bhikshu Lunar Canopy was myself. Sakra, you should know that the offering of Dharma is the highest form of offering. Therefore, Sakra, you should make offering of Dharma as an offering to all Buddhas.